May I have your attention, please? We're going to get started. And first of all, I just want to say thank you for showing up, coming out to represent National Military Appreciation Lunch. So the first thing on our agenda is to have our opening prayer. I'm going to ask everyone to stand, please. And we're going to call up Jesse Tate to pray us in. We're going to bow our head. You're in the way of that camera. Uh, Ed, if you could move over so you don't block it. Okay. okay. Uh, we'll bow our heads. We just thank you, Lord, for this National Military Appreciation. We're honoring, the, we're honoring this military day and, this, and those veterans that gave all. Father, we ask that you bless the widows and, uh, and, uh, and the widowers of those who gave all, Lord. We thank we, we, that we remember their sacrifices, Lord. We ask that you bless the, the widow and widowers. We bless their families, Lord, and their grandchildren, Lord. We thank that you bless this city, Lord, and bless this United States, Lord. Bless the, we thank you that you bless the Calumet City staff, bless the mayor, and bless his family, Lord. We thank you for blessing the Calumet City residents, Lord, and bless the Calumet City um, vets, and bless their health, Lord, and bless their minds, Lord. We thank you, Lord, uh, for blessing the food, take the impurities out, and let it nourish our bodies, Lord. And we just thank you, Lord, for, for being with us and for hearing our prayers, Lord. We just thank you for this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. Next, we will introduce our trumpeter. I'd like to welcome Charles Pryor, Jr. He will be our trumpeter for today. And he's going to play a couple songs, recognition of the National Military Appreciation Lunch. Charles Pryor, Jr. I'd like for everyone to stand. This is the Pledge of Allegiance. Are you going to play it? Okay, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, you can come over here. That's fine. to remain standing. We got one more. In the military, when a veteran has passed, 
no matter what the case is. It's a song called Taps, and the Taps is in recognition of that service member, the services that he rendered to the United States of America. And I know we're all glad we live in the United States of America. So again, the TAPS is the way of the military saying to that veteran, his family, job well done. So we're going to do two things. I'm going to read it first. A lot of people have never heard the words. I'm going to read it briefly, quickly, and then we're going to have the trumpeter to play TAPS. And this is in recognition of all those veterans that served this country that gave all. They gave their lives in recognition of Memorial Day and then all veterans that, uh, again, that are deceased. Day is done, gone the sun. From the lakes, from the hills, from the sky, all is well, safely rest. God is near. Fading light dims the sight, and a star gems the sky, gleaming bright from afar. Drawing near falls the night. Thanks and praise for our days. Near the sun, near the stars, near the sky, as we go, this we know, God is near. And now we will have the playing of the tap song. Detail, attention, hop! Present, halt! Okay, it's on you. Be seated. Thank you. Good job. My name is Charles Pryor. I am the veteran coordinator for Calumet City. I am a resident of Calumet City for over 20 years. I am a United States Army War Veteran, two Purple Heart recipient, and honorable discharge. First, I would like to thank the mayor of Calumet City for his vision and starting the support program for veterans. Of all branches, Army, Air Force, Marines, Navy, Coast Guard, and Reserve units, it is needed and there is no question that all veterans that serve this country in any capacity should be honored and recognized for their service. Again, key word, all veterans that served in the military. We want to give recognition to them. Second, the combat veterans. Those should be given, given a special thanks for the efforts of putting their life on the line for this country. Facing death for a job is quite a heavy burden for anyone. They're honored with the Combat Infantryman's Badge. Third, those veterans that gave all in losing their life and defending our great country should be recognized with a dedicated tribute in honoring their sacrifice. And along with the losing of their life, there's those that were wounded. So there's two classifications, those that were wounded and killed. President George Washington created the Badge of Merit. Then it became the Honorably Distinguished Purple Heart Award. The Purple Heart is given to those soldiers that were wounded or killed by armed enemies of the United States of America in a war zone. Every Purple Heart recipient should be honored by being inducted into the National 
Purple Heart Hall of Honor located in New Windsor, New York. May I see a show of hands of any Purple Heart veterans in the room? I represent myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we have the URL. If you meet or run across any Purple Heart veterans, tell them that they should be in the National Purple Heart Hall of Honor. That's an honor that is given across this country. I'm so thankful that they decided to do this because once again, you had to have been wounded. That means given blood. You suffered. And number two, you were killed by an armed enemy of the United States of America in a war zone. So they deserve the honor of being inducted into the National Purple Heart Hall of Honor. I have a question here. Okay. So, um, but he passed on. Okay. So will he be in the Yes, he should. Yes. Um, I'm going to break my... This is because he deserves the honor. For those veterans, in recognition of Memorial Day and in recognition of the National Military Appreciation, those veterans, we walked away from our family. We showed up. We submitted to being brainwashed. The veterans laughing here, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> We obeyed the orders. We put our life on the line, willing to die. Not many people are willing to do that. We endured above normal human suffering. We paid our dues. We served our country. And with that said, I just want each of you to remember when you meet and greet a veteran. Uh, most folks now say, thank you for your service. I've got a translation for that. Now, again, you don't have to say this, but this is just my personal thought. It should be, how can I serve you? That's the degree of what a veteran went through. Me being the veteran coordinator, I come across many, many cases of veterans that have issues, they're suffering, they think they're normal, the majority of them, but they're going through things. And it really hurts my heart to think about how the veteran is treated. And that's one of the reasons why I'm fulfilling this role. Because I understand, I've been there, I've done that, I know about it, I know how it feels to be in them shoes. And so I have dedicated part of my life as being a caretaker. And that's the first piece of information that I want to give you today. There is a program through the Veterans Administration called the Caregiver Program. <coughs> if you are the child, the, the spouse, grandparent of any veteran that needs help, it's called the Caregiver Program. You can apply at the VA regional office, and they literally will give you a stipend. What am I saying? They will pay you to be that veteran's caretaker. So I thank God for that program. Why? You're serving that veteran now, going back to what I mentioned a little while ago. And again, a lot of veterans have no idea of what they don't know. They've been through a lot. They're trying to cope, they're trying to exist, they're trying to live a normal life. So anything that any of us can do to help them, by all means become that caregiver for that veteran.
So that's my opening welcome. And again, I want to say uh, thank you for coming out to the National Military Appreciation Lunch. We could give a program here for eight hours and recognizing and thanking veterans. But we're going to condense that into a short time here and just give reverence for those veterans that serve this country. Uh, I have a special veteran that I want to mention. I actually have two. Uh, Mr. Renard, I want you to stand up, please. I want everyone to meet Renard. Uh, take a photo of this, this guy here. This is a special veteran. He's a war veteran like myself. And he's come a long way. Come a long way, a mighty long way. And I want to encourage him. That's why I invited him to make sure he got here so that we can encourage him to join this family. Uh, the mayor started this program a year ago. I've been on board for a year. And now I'm going to turn this program into a little family of veterans. And that's what veterans need. They need to feel that somebody cares for them. Somebody see me. And no matter what I'm going through, don't blame me for whatever I got or the baggage I'm carrying. Help me. So I just want to recognize Mr. Renard here. Let's give him a hand, everyone. Yeah. Yeah, and that's Ed's father-in-law, by the way. Good point. Yeah, good point. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so he's already going to be part of the staff. As we move forward with the program, we're going to create some things for him to do to make him feel like he's working for his family. And then what is this family going to do? <coughs> Work for him. Be his caregiver. There you go. There you go. So that's the spirit I want all of you to leave here with today, is that become some veteran's caregiver if you can. And then I'll, I'll even echo on that. If you have family members in your indicative family, extended families, reach out to them. You never know what an individual is going through. You know, you may see them and they, they look like they're normal. You think that they're normal, but they may be going through something. So ask them, what can I do? What can I help you with today? What do you need? And you never know how that might make them feel. Now, the other veteran, he, he's not here. His name is Clarence. This is a picture of him with the mayor. And when I think about this veteran, my heart really, really takes a dive. And without putting his personal business out too much, he was a nuclear radiation specialist. Yeah, I heard that. Nuclear radiation specialist. So what happened? He's lost both kidneys, he had lung cancer, and he, he's really the top of the line for me right now to do everything I can in my power to help him. And I thank God that he's, he's making progress. When I started a year ago, his percentage level was at zero. Yeah, and this is after his illnesses. Well, guess where he's at right now? 50%. Yay, let's give him a hand. <laughs> yeah, and I'm in pursuit of getting him to what? 100%. 100% service connection. Yeah, matter of fact, he was going to be here, but he ended up having an aneurysm in his arm. He's at a doctor's appointment right now. So he's one of the veterans that, again, from the prayer, we pray for Clarence. Okay. All right, at this time, I'm going to have our distinguished brother to come up and introduce the staff of Calumet City. And after we do this, we're going to take a photo, a group photo of the staff. Then after we do that, then we're going to take a group photo of the veterans. By the way, let me see a show of hands of all of the veterans that are present today. All veterans. All veterans. Yeah, let's give them a hand. All right, all right. Good job, good job. So, Mr. Cleo Jones, please come to the front and introduce the staff of Calumet City on behalf of the mayor. Let's give Cleo a hand for showing up, everyone. All right, all right.
Okay. Thank you, sir. All yours. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. And I am so appreciative of being here today uh, with Mr. Charles Pryor, our veteran coordinator. And Charles actually, him and I sat down and had a discussion in, in part of this event today. And uh, the things that he discussed, the very thing he said that the honorable thing everyone always say, thank you for your services. And he just said to me that that is not enough. And I totally agree after having a conversation with him and discussing all the things that veterans go through. And after the completion of the service, it's not the active service that the veteran's life is in jeopardy. It is the service, it is after the service he so discussed. So that is part of his job, is to ensure that each veteran gets what they deserve from their active duties. So I truly appreciate him, and I actually watched uh, this guy into action when I had a confrontation with a veteran who came into the office very hostile about the situation that he thought the city should be providing to him. And Mr. Pryor walked up and really completely diffused the situation. The situation was that he thought that the city should be providing some of the services that the city don't have to offer. But Mr. Pryor, who is a veteran coordinator who knows how to handle these type of discussion in the veteran, he was right, but after Mr. Pryor engaged into the discussion, he really toned this type of thing down and directed the veteran to the, the necessary resources that he solely deserved and he's truly honored to have. So once again, I appreciate all you veterans for everything you have done. And as Mr. Pryor discussed, freedom is not free. Freedom is not free. And that was proven 9-11. So him and I had that discussion, we, we talked about that. So uh, to understand the role of a veteran is to understand what's going on, is to help and work with them. So without further discussion, I would like to introduce the Calumet City staff and executive team. And I will ask you, you want to come up? Yes, yeah, have them to come up. Yeah, okay, I ask you to please come up as your name is called to be recognized to, at, at today's event. Uh, at this time, uh, Mayor Jones, who will not be able to make it here. He may make it here, he may not make it here, but uh, on his behalf, we would like to recognize Mayor Jones, so let's please give him a hand. Because it is Mayor Jones is the reason why the vision of Mr. Pryor is here, because he wants to do something to honor not just the Calumet City veterans, but all veterans all around. I'd like to call the city administrator, Ms. Deanne, Ms. Deanne Joffrey, please come to the front. Right. Operations Supervisor and Manager, uh, uh, Jewel Stanley. So before I go any further, excuse me, the city officials, right now I don't see any aldermen in the room, any aldermen in the room. We do have our uh, city treasurer, Mr. Jerry Tucker. Will you please come on up, sir? Sorry about the honorable Jerry Tucker is here. Let's give him a hand. I'd like to honor, as well as being here, our first responders. If we did not have first responders in our community anywhere and everywhere, where would the communities be? So we have to honor them as well. Also, I would like to introduce our police chief, Mr. Kevin Kolash. <laughs> Is Assistant Police Chief Andre Black here? He's on vacation. Cal Assistant Police Chief Keith Kalkowski. Did I see that right? Quiet. Quiet, Quiet Kalkowski. <laughs> <Kyle. laughs> <laughs> uh, we do not have Commander uh, Ryan Gover here, right? He's not here. No. What about uh, Commander Erickson? He's not here. Officer Jeff McBrayer, will you come on up, sir? McBrayer. I miss any police officers still here? No, Sitting on the other side of that first responder group, what would we do without our fire department? All right. All right. All our right. paramedics, 
our first responders. I had the opportunity to watch our police, our fire chief, Mr. Glenn Barker, in, in, in command yesterday when we had a resident who just collapsed right in front of the building. And he took complete command of that whole authority, ensured that the resident got everything he deserved. So, Fire Chief, will you please come on up? Thank you for your service. Is the Deputy Chief here? He is not. He's not. Pete Beninelli. As the Director, Mr. Kenneth Jones, he's here. His, it's, as the Emergency Service Disaster Assistant Agency, Agency. Okay. And his staff is here, right? Mark and Alexis, come, come on up. Our superstar building and zoning department, Mr. Cheryl Tillman, where are you? All right. <laughs> All right. We have our crime free housing department here. Mark Bansky, Mike Bansky. Mike. Right. Okay, All right. Okay, Ashley. Okay, don't blame it on my uh, uh, head. Blame it on my don't blame it on my heart. Blame it on my head. Uh, Maria Antavirus, where are you at? The PD secretary. Thank you. We have our personnel director, Mr. Destin Dorchet. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, and also as a veteran as well. Amen. Economic development, Ms. Val Williams is not able to, assist, to be with us today. She has, uh, she, I, think, I believe she's on vacation. So we have, uh, as the acting uh, director here, Erica Jenkins. No, she's not. Okay, community development is this Christina. Is she here? No, Jesse Tate, you come on up, sir. All right. Economic development. Also, while we let's go back to the executive team, we have the mayor's uh, assistance uh, from the executive team. We have uh, Erica Jenkins, no, Erica McGee, and Michelle Turner. You please come on up. Also, we have uh, in our public work, keeping the, the, the city in order, keeping make sure that things are straight and clear in our streets out there. We, we have our wonderful commissioner, Mr. Jericho Thomas. You please come on up. And his deputy commissioner, Ms. Scott Misita Nama, right? And who am I missing? Okay. Oh, we have our IT team here. Is Megan? I saw Megan running around here somewhere. Is she gone? And we have our uh, audio video coordinating team. We have Mr. Ed Steve. And assistant Ed Steve is Monty. Where's Monty? Monty Jones in the back. Did I miss anyone from out of the system? From out of the Cali Med City staff? That's everyone. Jericho, come on up. We're going to take a photo. You stand on the side. You got to be in the photo. <laughs> For our newsletter. Yeah. Jericho. Yeah, there you go. Scott. And, <laughs> and once again, we'd like to thank the veteran coordinator, yeah. Mr. Charles Pryor, for putting on this event. All right. All right. All right. Okay. Can you get us all? Can you get us all? Yeah, squeeze in, right? Squeeze a little bit. Yeah. Too. Squeeze in, okay. Is that how the sun go to the left, to the right, to, to the left and to the right, <laughs> to, the left, to, the right. <laughs> to the left and to the right, to the left and to the right, to the right. <laughs> to the left and to the right. Uh, and, and, and you might have to turn a little bit. Yeah, turn sideways. Yeah, turn to the side. Yeah, bring it in. Bring it in. Squeeze it in. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, I got a camera. All right, one, two, three. Okay. All right, all right, all right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. 
Mr. Hey, buddy. I made it. Good to see you, man. <laughs> Okay, the next thing on the agenda is for all of the veterans that are present. Please come to the front and let's take a photo for the Calumet City recognition. All veterans, please come to the front. All veterans. Good to see you, man. All right, all right, my brother. How you doing, sir? All right, all right, all right, all right, now. All right, representing. Representing, Mr. Destin, representing. A couple more veterans coming forward. I see the 1st Calvary Division coming forward. Short guys in front. 1st Division, 9th Marines. All right, Marines. All right, all right. 1st Cal, what, what, what brigade were you with? I was with the second of the seventh. Who were you with? First of the thirty. First of the thirtieth. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Yes, sir. Two o third reconnaissance airplane. All right. All right. Sixty seven. Sixty eight. Sixty seven. Sixty eight. All right. All right. Are you one hundred percent? One hundred percent. Oh, good for you, man. Good for you. Good for you. All right. Yes, sir. All right. I'll accept that. <laughs> and. And you are with who? 416th Engineering Battalion. Engineering Battalion. All right. Welcome up. Come on up. All right. All right. All right. Make sure you get some good photos of the veterans here. And make sure this gets in our newsletter for Calumet City. Yeah. No, oh, 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 don't move, don't move. Detail, attention, huh. present, halt. What up? Halt. On behalf of Calumet City, I'd like to thank all of you vets for showing up. And once again, if you're not at 100%, see me. I got my cards right here. If you are not getting all of your veteran benefits, see me. I work for you. I'm your point man. I've been there, done that. Whatever I can do to help you, I'm part of your caretaker team. I want to extend that out. Don't hesitate. I mentioned last year that, uh, you know, if a vet needed assistance or something at 3 in the morning, call me. Give me your card. Okay. <laughs> and the thought was that I would tell the mayor, uh, I have to give him a call, I said, Mayor, I'll be in late to work today because i got to go do some caretaking work. But I mean that from the bottom of my heart. I just want to give a special note here. Uh, in my story, in my case, my puzzle, my journey, it has been horrific. I'm going to make my story real short. It took me seven years to get my full honors. Seven years. Seven years I was branded. It was a mishap that happened in the war zone. I think the average, I'm not calling myself above average, but a lot of folks may not have been able to sustain, ascertain what was going on, keep their head straight. But God blessed me. I don't take the credit for nothing. I give it to God. He blessed me to keep my head straight. And one day, them seven years ended. And I started on my journey of getting my honor. And that's why I'm in the National Purple Heart Hall of Honor. I went there. There's an interview. Go to that URL, www.thepurpleheart.com. And I gave an, um, an interview of my first wound. I was actually shot twice. But anyway, my point is, is how thankful I am 
that my name is not on that Vietnam Memorial Wall in Washington, D.C. How many times have I been up there? And when I go, that's my mantra. My name is not on that wall. And who did that? My dear Heavenly Father. I have an earthly father, but my dear Heavenly Father is the one that decided that I would be a survivor. And I used to wonder, why did I have to go through? Why did I have to deal with all of what I went through? But guess what? Today I know why. Because he wanted me to be a helper. And Renard, I'm adopting you as being one of my chief of staff helpers. Let's give a hand for Renard, everyone. Yeah. Renard, you're part of this family. Yeah. And, I, and I'm not asking you to work. I'm drafting you. <laughs> I'm bringing you aboard. And that's the love I have for veterans. And I'm giving back. And I've done so much. But I don't take credit for that. I give it to God. And I want to say to each of you, thank you for showing up today. I saw a hand here. I'd like to, uh, from the veterans, I'd like to, and the responders, I'd like to say thank you that you're doing this for us. And thank you mostly for not having MREs or C rations. For <laughs> C rations. <laughs> Oh, my God. Okay, one more. Go ahead. My name is Tony Marino. I'm the commander of the 802 down the street on Holman Avenue. We, too, have uh, the DAV Chapter 17 with Louie, my cousin Louie and I are a member of, mm -hmm. and they take care of the vets, too. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. If you're interested, every first Thursday of the month, mm -hmm. we have a meeting there. They help mm -hmm. all vets. Mm -hmm. And I went through there. We got 100% through there. And uh, any other problems you you have, you can come to our post and ask for some type of assistance other than the DAV. If you have any problems, you can come to us. Our uh, quartermaster, Angel Rosario, he's always there. Make one call and we're there. But I wanted to let you know, for all veterans, that they are there every Thursday, first Thursday of the month. Seven o'clock, sure. Well, be there at six so you can sign the sheet. All right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> because at yeah, seven, exactly. they've got a long line. Yeah. But they so will stay the there. Bar. They'll yeah. stay there till they take care of everybody. <clears throat> all you need is your DD-214 and any med medical records you have. Your medical records are a big factor to move you up that ladder fast. So, any assistance, our post is open to <coughs> you. Thank, Thank you, you for those words, those comments. Thank you. Uh, just as to let you know, I am a lifetime member. DAV, VFW, American Legion, Military and Purple Heart, First Cavalry Division Association. And I refer every veteran to where? The DAV. They are the largest lobbyists in the country for veterans. <coughs> if, you, know, you could file a claim, I could file a claim, but when it comes from the DAV, the VA recognizes it. Mm -hmm. So we're definitely on board with that. And the other veteran, what was your name? You just... James Nanista. James Nanista. Okay, what i like to have happen is let's do a, a roll call. We'll go down the line. <coughs> Everyone uh, say your name. <coughs> And then uh, just briefly introduce yourself. You want, our, you want our serial numbers? No, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that serious. <laughs> just quickly, quickly. We're on a time scale. But start on the end and come on around. Say uh, your name. Tony Marino was in the Army. Army. Combat medic. All right, next. Rich Dominiak. I was in the Army. Security agency. Top secret organization at the time, still is. I'm the coordinator out at the Lansing Veterans Memorial for over 32 years. Mm. I run the ceremonies there at the memorial at the Lansing Airport. We just had our ceremony Sunday. We had to take it indoors into the hangar because of the, the weather. We have the Department of Defense Rifle Squad with us for about four or five years now, firing our 21 gun salute. We have Boy Scouts from town. We have other volunteers that come out, and I have 13 volunteers that include two women veterans that have been with us, and they do the best. So anybody that might be interested in joining our Honor Guard, see me after the meeting. Thank you. James Benista, Calumet City, Republic of Vietnam, Tuiwa, 203rd Reconnaissance Airplane Company, 67 and 1968. Hi, Evelyn, you asked 
Marie Corps. Oh, excuse me. She had those right hands. Oh, excuse me. Sorry. We need to have quiet so that we can hear the veterans speaking. Rich? I'm, a, I'm most proud of my service in Calumet City. I was right. police and fire commissioner. I hired the first black policeman in Calumet City. I heard, hired the first woman firefighter in Calumet City. I was uh, environmental commissioner. I was public works supervisor with Marie over here. And uh, I'm still at for uh, 78 years old. I'm uh, the zoning commissioner. All right. Mm -hmm. All right, next. Uh, Pete Maternick, United States Air Force, Flight Line Crew Chief Mechanic, AF 68, never mind. All right, next. Dustin Dorchak, U.S. Army, Mortarman. Renard Floyd, United States Marine Corps. Charlotte Scott, no U.S. Army, 1st of the 30th Artillery. Timothy Terry, U.S. Army, Artillery. Nice bills, U.S. Navy. This is Car C, Military. All right, all right. All right. All right. All right. Again, I saw U.S. Army, B Company, 2nd and 7th Battalion, 1st Cavalry Division, Vietnam 2 Purple Heart War Veteran. So let's give all these vets a hand. <laughs> uh, we got the photos, right? We good? Good? Okay, you all may be seated. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, next announcement on the agenda. The mission of the Calumet City Vet Services Program is to raise the quality of the veteran's life. You heard a couple of the veterans mention the organizations that they in, the DAV in particular. That's what we do. We refer veterans that need help. If you know of a homeless veteran, have him to call me. I mean, instantly I can call the safe haven and they will provide housing for him right now. We have the 800 hotline numbers to Washington, D.C. We have the crisis line numbers. So for those of you, please get my information, contact me, so you can learn what I know to help other veterans. Uh, we offer these assistance services by category, housing assistance and homelessness, health and medical service, education opportunities, employment, claim disability processing, financial assistance planning. And on behalf of the mayor and all of the staff of Calumet City, we would like to thank you for sharing your time with us today. And the last thing I want to announce is our new sign up. We have a new program that we're putting in place and I'm gonna switch hats on you now. As of this moment, my new announcement and title is the Cal Vets. You like that? Yeah. Cal Vets. Why? Number one, Calumet City. Number two, the first cavalry division. I was in the first cavalry. We, the, the guys used to ride horses. Then they moved them to helicopters. So the team that we're going to start as of today, we want to, to, to create families, little groups of families and veterans, and we're doing reach outs. I have clients in Washington, D.C., 
Mississippi, California, Mexico. And so when you, when you contact with a vet, refer them back to our program. We're going to be called the Cal Vets. So just a couple of announcements about that. And then before I really stop, I'm going to have the, the police chief to come up, and I'm going to have him to say a couple words, especially the veterans that's, uh, that's on staff for Cal City. Number one, we have the honor flight. I had the blessing of taking the honor flight in September of last year, and this is the booklet that you will get. So for all war veterans that serve this country, all day expense paid one day, up to Washington, D.C., and you get a chance to see the memorials. There's only one monument in Washington, D.C., only one, and that's the tall diamond-shaped building. Everybody knows that, what I'm talking about. The rest of them are called memorials. You would visit the World War II, Korea, Vietnam War memorials. So it's called the Honor Flight. Please contact me. I'm going to have a sign-up sheet that I'm going to pass around. And for you veterans, and even if you're not a veteran, sign the sheet for me so you can be a part of it. You can be a volunteer. All veterans need family relationships. Number two, hometown hero banner displays and recognizing honoring veterans of Calumet City. So I want to take a look here to my right. The mayor brought this program to me, and it is active right now. This is a sample of the banner. It's called the Hometown Hero. So I've contacted them already. The program is in place. And they gave me this huge banner of myself <laughs> as a sample. So for all of you veterans, sign up to become part of the Hometown Hero group. OK? It's a nice way of being recognized. All right. <coughs> Next program, computer training, introduction to hardware and software, specialty applications. All right, and listen at this, what I'm going to say next now. The VA will give a veteran a free computer or a free tablet. Yeah. What you got to do, you got to apply for it. So who's going to do that for you? You're a caretaker. <laughs> yes, yeah, you can get a free computer or a tablet to help you with your appointments, medications, and dealing with what you have to do to raise the quality of your life. The next one, music lessons to provide veteran therapy. Yeah, if you feel like you don't have nothing to do, we have a mastermind trumpet player. Charles Pryor, stand up for us, please. We want to give this guy another hand. Let's give him a hand. He's going to be, come up here for a second. And Charles the Six, come up here just for a second. Come on, come on. <laughs> yeah, we performed at the Calumet City Black History Month. We're all trumpet players. And I just want to thank God these are my comrades here, okay? Right. Yeah, they keep up with me. They check on me, okay? And I'm just so thankful to have me some comrades, boots on the ground, running with me. So, but uh, Charles Pryor will be heading up the music program, music lessons to promote veteran therapy. We even want to start a Calumet City band. All right. I, I heard all right on that. I heard an all right on that. <laughs> Yeah, so this is going to be the crew team here. We're going to get some other musicians. Uh, this guy here has been to Brazil, Paris, a number of places. He's played Chicago Playboys, Big James and Chicago Playboys. And he's a seasoned mastermind trumpet player. Right. Playing the trombone. We're looking into string instruments. So by all means, join the program. You know, get involved. Do some things. Get your time to be active. Don't just sit around and, and I don't have nothing to do and I'm, I'm not blah, blah, blah. Get busy. So I just wanted to introduce, let's give these guys a hand here. They, they're, they're really good. All right, all right, all right. Okay, thank you. All right, Charles Pryor, the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth, by the way. Okay, next one, free White Sox games to veterans. Okay, I'm going to leave these uh, flyers right here. These are flyers, all you veterans. What you have to do is count, contact the Cook County Clerk's Office and get your ID card. And where's my ID card? Bernard, one of the things I always like to do is when I talk about something and tell about something, sure. I like to show. There's my ID card. Okay, I can get into golf courses, restaurants, different programs, different benefits. All you got to do is 
Call them and sign up. And they're offering free tickets for the White Sox games. I'm going to leave these uh, flyers right here. By all means, take one. Oh, by the way, that's another one, too. This is the DAV uh, newsletter. And again, I want to introduce the DAV. They're right here on Holman Avenue, 5820 Holman Avenue. They meet on the first Thursday in the month at 7 o'clock. And once again, uh, there are services there. I've been a lifetime member for years. So we're going to work with them as well. The next one, horseback riding, outings, and lessons for veteran therapy. I've already contacted the owner of Forest View Farm Stables, and they're willing to work with veterans. Something to do, something to help you to reach out, something to make you feel a part of. I, I rode my first horse at three years old in Arkansas. And ever since then, I love horses. I walk right up to them and start talking to them, and they look at me, how you doing? I'm, like, I'm doing fine, how are you? <laughs> but there's a relationship, there's a word out, that the spirit of a horse, he can pick up your countenance immediately. And then all you got to do is pick his up. So we're going to do that program. The next one, fishing outings, right here at the Powderhorn, right here on Burnham Avenue. Yeah, for those, let me see the hands of those veterans that like to fish. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. We're going to start a little fishing group. And one of the things I used to do is being Raymond Farr, we go fishing, we catch the fish, and then cook them right there on the bank and eat them. <laughs> and then the last one is golf outings. Yeah, Top Golf. And then uh, Wicker Park right here in Highland, Indiana. Yeah, they have a driving range. And they have a golf course. I've taken lessons twice. I've never put in enough time to really get real good at it. But we're willing to start programs to help veterans to play golf. It's a way of a reach out to help to do what? Raise the quality of the veteran's life. So I'm going to ask Charles Pryor the six. I'm going to give you a job right now. I want you to come up and get a few of these uh, sign up forms and take them around to the veterans. Come up and get these. Just come up. Come here. Come to me right now. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what to do. Come up and get these. All right. For all of you veterans, raise your hand and go give them one of these sheets. Take them one of them. Just pass them out there. There you go. There you go. Yay. And again, what we're doing is we're trying to get a little family of veterans. Yeah, this one year has been very great. I've got over 70 clients right now, and I'm so thankful. So the goal here is by the end of next year, when we have this luncheon again, we will have grown our relationships. We will help many more veterans. And we don't just uh, limit to Calumet City. We'll branch out to anywhere. As I mentioned, I got a couple clients in Mississippi, clients in Washington. Now, the last thing I will say is, uh, if you don't have my number, when Charles Pryor, number six, gets finished passing out the sign-up, and please sign up, even if you're not a veteran, take the sign-up sheet and get it, give it back to me today, and I'm going to uh, start the little database. By trade, I'm an IT guy, database administrator, and we're going to start the little families, those that like to fish, those who want a horseback ride. Those who want to learn instruments, be in the Calumet City Band. So I will put together little databases of those, and then we'll ask those veterans to reach out to their family members and other veterans. <coughs> so I just want to thank you again for coming out. Charles is going to pass out my card, so if you don't have one, you got everyone? Any more? No more hands? Okay, bring those back up here. Now, take these cards and go pass the cards out right quick. Yeah. Veterans, raise your hand again. Man, if you got the card already, once good. If you don't, take my card. Give the card to someone else. All right. Do you have any pens? Pardon me? Pens, ink pens. No, I don't have any ink pens. This is what I have right now. Okay, so at this time, we're going to have the police chief to come forward and give us some words of encouragement, <laughs> some words of safety for the city, speak to our hearts. 
when I see the fire chief has already left. So let's give our chief police uh, a hand. Oh. Yes, sir. Talk to us. Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Pryor. We can all see he's got a whole lot of energy, right? <laughs> so I am privileged to stand before you here to acknowledge the bravery, commitment, and sacrifices our military personnel have made and continue to make in defense of our freedom. More importantly here, on, on the policing side of things, I want to call your attention to the members of the Calumet City Police Department who served our country and continue to serve us here in Calumet City. The United States Air Force, Sergeant Lamar Laster, Officer David Myro and William Seams. For the United States Army, Officer Mark Zeminski and Officer Mike Pagan. For the United States Marine Corps, Captain Mike Serrano, Sergeant Marissa Chavez, Officer Keith Bogdanovich, Officer Aaron Martinez, Officer Ryan Lindell, and Officer David Smith. Veterans and active service personnel, thank you. I know Mr. Pryor said thank you is not enough but I'm offering my thanks to you. And on behalf of the city, I thank you for what you have done. Thank you for the bravery that you displayed when faced with adversity, for the sacrifices you made for our country. Mr. Pryor said earlier, you left your homes, you left your family in defense of our country, and that is much appreciated. I cannot say that enough. And those that have made the ultimate sacrifice continue to be honored and, and remain in our prayers. The freedom we re enjoy is a result of the sacrifices that you all have made and the courage you demonstrated when faced with danger. Unless you've walked in the boots or been, a, been an affected family member, you really truly don't know. And I'm going to tell you something that President Reagan said in 1983. Veterans know better than anyone else the price of freedom, for they've suffered the scars of war. Mm. And that means a lot. It truly does. We can assume that we know what, what it is that, that you guys all went through, but we really don't know. And that's what we, we really appreciate. So with great sincerity and the utmost respect, thank you for your service to our country and for carrying out the tradition of duty, honor, and country. Thank you. All right, all right. Thank you, Chief. Yep. Chief, good words. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I just want to echo one word on what he said, one, one thought. And that is, <clears throat> you can kind of imagine some things, right? But even for myself, combat full, full combat veteran, when I look back over my shoulder, it scares me. It really does. How did I not go crazy looking at death, 8 in the morning, 12 noon, 3 in the evening, 7 in the evening? One at night, two in the morning, eight the next morning, noon the next, constantly looking at death. And so for me to wrap up my story, my journey, my vision, my puzzle, it was God. It wasn't me. I wasn't in control. I was touched twice. I was shot twice. But it didn't take me down. So I am so thankful to be alive. And I just want to say that for the veterans, you know, we, we, I'm the youngest of six boys. When I came home, of course, I had relationships with my brothers, my biological brothers. But when it comes to that Vietnam vet, Renard, I don't have to talk to him. I don't have to say nothing to him. I don't have to guess. I look him in the face, and I know what he went through. And that's why I'm a veteran caretaker. Yeah, I just, just put those words out there to say, help a vet if you can. And then again, if you know of a Purple Heart vet, make sure you give them my information and have them to contact them. And now what I'm going to do is open up the floor for comments. And uh, Ed, if you can, whoever makes a comment, we want to get their comment back, a little feedback about today's service. What do you think about it? What we can do to do it better? And then we're going to grow this program as we move forward. So I would appreciate a little comments on feedback from what you've heard and seen today. And then once we're done with this, it's lunchtime. <laughs> so give me some comments, please. Somebody talk to us.
Renard, I want to hear something from you. Come oh, on, no, come on, no, 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 Renard, I, you're I, in I, the family. I'm not a spokesman. That's okay. I didn't ask for us a speech <laughs> or write a book. I just want to get some comment, feedback. What do you think about what we have done and where we are? This is the greatest moment since I've been out of here. Well, all right. See there? I like that. I like that. I like that. That will help somebody else to hear that. Okay. Thank you so much. In the back. Um, I belong to the Senior Care Advisory Committee. And um, in Penn University, we have enough members here to be free stand for the President of the Senate to free stand. And um, we meet once a month. And we are getting, we are given information about the veterans organizations here. So we like to say we're getting this place to try to spread that. So these are the members. to enhance the veterans program and he's doing a phenomenal job um, but just know that beyond today beyond this moment we certainly welcome your feedback ideas and how we can strengthen this program thank you all right let me hear from one or two of the veterans here somebody you veterans what do you think give me a little feedback since i've been here <laughs> Uh, anything that the city can do to help speed the process for better veterans to get their, you know, uh, benefits. Uh, it's taken me since 2007 mm -hmm. when I started. Mm -hmm. And I've been denied and I've been in combat. Mm -hmm. So anything that the city can do to help speed the process, veterans get their uh, benefits would be appreciated. All right, Renard, let's give him a hand. Everyone. Thank you, Renard, for opening up. Thank you so much. God bless you. Any others? Any other comments? One in the back. Comment. Here, catch that comment back there, folks. Maybe they can work on a certain percentage of property tax discount for veterans. Yes. Thank you, yes. Very We're good. definitely working on that. <laughs> <laughs> Any other comments? Okay, I see Jesse's gone. I'm going to ask everyone to stand. And I'm going to give us a closing out prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this day. Thank you for waking us up this morning, clothing our right mind. We thank you for all of your many benefits, Lord. We thank you for what you have done, what you're doing right now, and for what you're going to do. And Lord, we just come to you as humble as we know how, asking for your guidance. Increase our faith. Increase our thinking ability. The Bible says, so as a man thinks, so as he is. If the man changes his way of thinking, his life will change. So we ask you to bless us today, Lord. Thank you for this ceremony. Thank you for each family represented here. We ask you to bless the mayor and his family and all of the staff of Calumet City. We ask all these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I declare lunchtime. <laughs> you are dismissed. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.